Morrison tonight at Haverty Grace. It's homecoming for the Warriors versus the Falston Cougars in a matchup of two Chesapeake Division teams. Jimmy, uh, the first year coach there at uh, Falston, not really the first year coach. You're actually 23 years in. This is your first as head coach. Yep. How's it feel being the head man now after Dave Seske? That's been Falston for all the time Falston's been there. Yeah, it, it's, I mean, it's tough to replace somebody who's been there a long time and, you know, did, you know, things year in and year out a certain way and, you're trying to forge your own identity and so there's there's been some challenges and this year's team 28 on the roster sophomores freshmen starting it really is tough playing the teams that are so established yeah i mean we, we're a smaller roster than we have been in a number of years um so we have a lot of young kids playing um you know our kids work hard every week they're working hard and uh, we're playing as hard as we can and the you know, rjv's done a good job so we, we think we have some things coming up in the future that are going to be good for us, but this has been a tough year. I mean, there's no getting around it. It's been tough. When you come in on homecoming night, you're playing a team that is very fast, a team that, you know, is uh, headed for the state playoffs, although Brian doesn't want to hear that right now. But uh, what do you do? How do you counteract their speed? Well, they're they're hard to play against, obviously, because they're very good, they're fast, um, but they also they don't help you much. Uh, you know, they're, they're very, probably of all the teams we played, the most balanced on offense. I mean, I put all their plays that we, you know, that we look at through the computer and they're, they're like, I think 51% pass, 49 run. Um, and there's not any real like giveaways, like certain teams, you, you know, on like third and less than five, you're going to get one of two options. They're really good at, at mixing up what they do. So you combine a really good team with good athletes and then they're very well coached and they mix their play calling well, it, it's really hard to defend. Well, look at your team, your passing attack has been pretty good. Colin Atkins has really played well at quarterback. Yeah, Colin's been a two-year quarterback for us and um, you know he's one of the better passers in the league. And uh, you know he's a kid that we feel like can keep us in games when he's when he's having a night. I think a couple weeks ago against North Harford, he hit like 80% of his passes that night. So if we get him get him on a night when he when he heats up, I mean, he can keep us in some ball games. Very good, Jimmy. Hang with me a second. Sure. I'm going to turn to talk to Brian. Brian Eberhardt, uh, your team was undefeated last week. Elkton here on your field, 24 uh, nothing. Before you could blink your eyes, uh, I mean, it has to be a disappointment for you and your team. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, certainly we uh, we weren't ready for that. Um, you know, we had some uh, we had some turnovers that they that they capitalized on and. Uh, and that's pretty much the way that first quarter went. And uh, I was proud of the way we finished, though. You know, you, you spot a team like Elkton, 24 points. I mean, they're really good, you know, and, and uh, you get them 24 points there in the first quarter. And then uh, then we battle them the rest of the way. And I, I was proud of the way we finished, but certainly not the way we wanted to start against a really good team like Elkton. We talked off air about homecoming, about picture day, about distractions, certainly something a coach would rather not deal with, but it's a big night for the kids. It is. Uh, and, you know, you have to keep that in mind as a coach, I think. That is, uh, it, it's a special moment for these guys, especially for the seniors. They only get one uh, at, at high school homecoming. So we try to keep that in mind. And uh, our guys have been pretty focused, though. Coming off a loss like that, you know, we, we've had a very focused week. So. Well, look at Alex. Alex Greesock, this young man, not only a great athlete, but a great kid, a great scholar. He's the kind of guy that you'd like to keep him another year if you could, but uh, as a senior, he certainly is uh, everything you hope he would be. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're talking about a high caliber kid with, uh, with, with uh, very high GPA, uh, SATs out of this world. I mean, he's, he's, he's going to go somewhere um, to an engineering school and play another four years of football, and uh, he's going to be an easy admission for, for, for a college. And then, Coach, we look at a team you're playing, Falston, certainly the underdog. Homecoming night, you're looking ahead to see Milton Edgewood. How do you keep your team looking at Falston and saying, hey, this team would like nothing better than come in and pitch an upset against you? Well, we talk about being 1-0 every week. We're not looking ahead to see Milton Wright. We're not looking ahead to Edgewood. We're, we're playing the game that's in front of us today. So we really stress. Uh, that's that's one of the things that we stress week in and week out is 1-0. We need to be 1-0 this week, and then we'll, we'll concentrate on the games after that. But, um, you know, Falston coming in, they, they have a a really nice passing attack. They got some guys that can make plays, and as Coach alluded to, these guys heat up. It, it can be problems for us. And three region titles in three years. I know you'd like to take that next step. I know that's looking down the road, but certainly that has to be a goal. Ah, uh, yeah, it's always a goal coming in. You know, I, I, especially after the years that we've had. Um, you know, you, you get close, and uh, and you want to be able to you want to be able to finish it. So it's a it's a goal that we start the season with, I and mean, we're not afraid to talk about it. I mean, it's a it's a goal that we that we hope to achieve. And, uh, but again, we're, we're playing Falston tonight and 
trying to be one another this week. There you go, Brian Everhard, coach of the uh, Harvard Grace Warriors, Jimmy Grant, coach of the Falston Cougars. Best of luck to both of you tonight and for the rest of the season. Don't go away. It's perfect weather for football. Finally, a little fall chill in the air. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with the kickoff. Well, welcome into James R. Harris Stadium here in Haverty Grace. Uh, Don Morris and my partner, Bob McCone. Hey, Bob, you've got a team, Haverty Grace, they're 5-1. and one. They lost last week in a very heartbreaking uh, loss we'll talk about. Uh, Falston 0-5, uh, a team that, uh, you know, is admittedly by their own coaching staff down this year in terms of numbers, talent. I mean, how in the world would Falston have a chance to come in here and pull an upset? It's going to be very difficult for them in all honesty. Um, you know, the, the way the situation is right now with um, Havity Grace is experienced. They have some great athletes on their team. And as you stated, not only is Falston young and inexperienced, they, they start five sophomores at different positions and, and one freshman. Um, Bob, Bob pardon me one second. I'm going to talk to the truck just a second. I didn't hear your point of view. And by the way, our monitor is not working, truck, so I'm not sure exactly what our technical situation is. But we'll go ahead and assume that things are working and you can hear us out. Bob, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Yeah, no, I, I mean, it's, 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 it's very difficult. I mean, when you have a younger team that, that is inexperienced, uh, like he said, the numbers are down, uh, so there's not a lot of depth to work with. Um, you know, and it's his first year as, as a head coach, and, and he's going to do an, you know, an excellent job. He, he's been an assistant coach for, you know, for 20, 23 years. Yeah. You know, along those lines, he's been, been Dave Seske's number one man. Uh -huh. uh, you know, he has all the experience and capabilities of, of, of doing the job. It's just going to take time for Faustin to build back up, uh, build their team back up, build the numbers back up. And, and get some, some quality. Ready for the kickoff here. Conversely, we talked to Brian Everhart about how do you keep your team focused on Falston, not look ahead to see Milton Wright or Edgewood. And we'll see after that tough, tough time last week when Elkton came in here and scored three uh, defensive touchdowns on the first three attempts. So they were down 24 nothing as this game begins at nothing nothing. We're underway. Falston carrying the ball in the white uniforms. And here's a good chance coming out to the far side and on a nice, nice run back, getting all the way up. Uh, just about to the 40 yard line. First of all, Don, it is number 19, Jimmy Johnson, their six foot two, 180 pound star. And so that's a good way to start. It is. I don't think Harry Grace is going to have a problem getting up for the night's game. When you lose a football game and you have the quality that Harry Grace has, you're going to be foaming at the mouth to get back in, in front of your home crowd and homecoming and play. Uh, you, you don't have to worry about having a grace tonight. I would not want to be Falston, actually, uh, because, you know, you know that they're going to be a little bit upset, the, the Warriors uh, I'm talking about. Ball at the 39. Aikens with the throw. He overshoots his man, looking on that far side. Just a bit high for him. He was looking for C.J. Turner. Now, Turner, the 5'9", 160-pounder, he's one of the sophomore starters. 14 catches on the year. The passing attack, Bob, when you look at uh, Falston, they really have done a nice job passing the ball. It's run where they really haven't made them do much. Yeah. It, it. Second down, 10 yards to go. Aikens, the quarterback, Colin Aikens, 56 for 117, 48 percent, 588 yards, two touchdowns, fumble, ball is loose. Boy, that's what you don't want to see happen, to turn the ball over in your own territory. Yeah, that was a bad snap. Falston is able to get it back. Center Nick Morris falling on the ball. That'll be third down and a loss of two, third down and 12. Havre Grace has always had a lot of speed, Don, so, and, you yeah. know, and they've always had great athletes, yet they're one of the smallest schools in the county, and, and they've, you know, they've done it consistently for years. Big third down play here. Aikens looking for that first down to try to keep this drive alive. Ball possession, you actually obviously want to keep the ball in your possession. Aikens rolling, throwing, has a man open. It's going to be intercepted on the far side. Just a bit underthrown and pulling down the interception is Harvard Grace's Jordan White. White now has seven interceptions, Bob, on the year. He had six coming in. Jaden Hyman had fives. He's now got seven interceptions. Yeah, it was, you know, 
it was a good play. I mean, he, he threw it. The ball was a little underthrown. Jordan White under, you know, cut under the receiver. Yep. Put the hands up. He has great hands, Jordan White. He so does that. He just caught the football and was tackled immediately. And so. And the good news for Falston is it's like a punt. The, the ball was all the way down at the 26-yard line where Haverty Grace puts it in play. First and 10. Yeah, well, Haverty Grace is in trips over here to the right with a handoff to the back. Grease off the hands it off. Coming around that side, uh, number one, Christian Wilson. Check and no, that's a Zach Anderson. One more check, and I'll tell you the number. Yeah, number one is uh, is DeMontez Chin carrying the ball, a player that we had not had on our original starting lineup. He carries it for a short gain, up across the 30 to the 31, a pickup of four. Uh, he's a sophomore. Yeah. Didn't expect to see him starting. Uh, Brandon Rabbit now in the backfield. Talk about Alex Greesock. This young man is not only a great performer, but a great, oh my, what a nice job by Falston closing in. That'll bring up a third down. Big play by Ryan Kazizzi, Cameron Burns, Aaron Gardner, and Justin Wiegand across that front line. A loss of uh, maybe two on the play. Third down and still about six. Yeah, although he moved the chain and looks like third and five. I Big third down play. If Austin can hold them here, Bob, and get off the field, this is obviously what they want to do. Use that clock. Don't give Haverty Grace a chance to make those long plays that they like to make. Uh-oh, somebody jumps offside. That's not that's good. Gonna be, that's going to be close to a first down. Boy, if you're a coach Jimmy Grant, uh, you have to scratch your head. Now, let's see the officials. I don't see a flag on the field, but obviously there was some motion at the line of scrimmage. Let's see what they're talking about. I mean, he either jumped or something caused him to jump. But Joe McKeever, the referee, uh, Greg Sarabo, the umpire, Dave Montgomery, the linesman, Matt uh, Novick, the line judge, and the back judge, Joe Dominic. They're going to be against Falston. That will cost them five. And as you said, Bob, very close to a first down. Looks like, it, yeah, they're going to say it is a first down. Going to move the chains. Yeah. Boy, big, big mistake there. I mean, obviously, Boston was trying to shoot that gap and try to get off the field, but instead they give uh, Haverty Grace the first down. You know, one of the things Haverty Grace does very well is throw the football. And uh, they haven't thrown a pass yet, so we're seeing they're trying to establish the running game here. And, oh, there he comes. And there's the pass. Short throw. Hyman with the ball up across almost to the 50 yard line. Jaden Hyman. It's about an 11, 12 yard gain right there. Jimmy Reynolds is now in, the, in our booth. Jimmy, the principal here at, uh, at Haverty Grace. Always good to see him. And Jimmy has a lot of football in his life. He does that. Hey, look, there's a big penalty coming up against Haverty Grace. Played it, coached it. Jimmy was a classmate and a teammate of my son at uh, Perryville High School back in the day. So the big penalty now backs it all the way back inside the 30-yard line to the 29. Well, that's a big break for Falston. It is. Alex Greesock, Bob, you talked about him. He's 41 uh, for 242, running 5.9 yards, passing 57 for 107. Back to throw Greesock, looking down the middle, has his man, it's gonna be complete. That's Hyman again. Hyman on the move. He's free down that left sideline. He could go. Look at the speed of Hyman. Pushed out of bounds finally at about the 10 yard line. You talk about Greesock, Don, and, and um, you know, Uckback first team player last year. A lot of Division Three schools and, and very academic Division Three schools are looking at this young man. Uh, 4.3 GPA, uh, grade point average. He's at over 1,400 on the SATs. Uh, Case Western, Carnegie Mellon, Johns Hopkins, um, you know, are, are, are among the schools that are, are looking at him. And he wants to be an engineer. Uh, you know, he's got it all. Nice young man, too, I'm told. He keeps the ball around that left side. He could go in for the touchdown. And no signal. Did. Yeah, there's a signal. Touchdown from 15 yards out it is a 15-yard run by Alex Greesock. Greesock, who has 11 TDs coming in, now has 12. Nice run. Nice fake. Falston went to the fake, and then Greesock just outran him to the corner of the end zone. Five play drive starting at the 26 yard line of Haverty Grace. Warriors score first. 
Eight minutes and 30 seconds left in the first period. They're up by six to nothing. And now the kick is good. And so it's now seven nothing as Haverty Grace breaks on top in a drive of five plays. The big play was the pass from Greesock to Hyman of about 50 yards down that left sideline. You know, Haverty Grace has also always had kickers. It, 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 it seems like they've always had kids who could kick the football. Yeah. Field, kids who could kick field goals, let, you know, let alone extra points. And it looks like they have another one here. So the Warriors now, unlike last week when they fell down 24 nothing to Elkton, Bob, we were talking to Brian Eberhardt, the coach, and he said, pick six, pick six, fumble recovery, touchdown, and then a ball that went right through the hands of the quarterback at the 15. Elkton was up 24 nothing before the, the fans had even settled into their seats here at Harris Stadium. Tough to overcome a start like that. It was. Now they came back. They lost 50 to 30, uh, so they didn't give up. They came back. But in many cases, as Brian said, it's a little bit humbling and maybe brought the team back a peg. They were riding high on that uh, five game win streak. There's the kickoff. Deep and over the head of the receiver. That's uh, Chandler Russo. Wow. So Falston will take over at their 20 yard line. First down and 10, eight minutes, 30 seconds left in the first period. Bob, obviously, if you're the Cougars, what you want to do is keep the ball away from Havity Grace. You want to have a drive. You want to eat up that clock. Well, you'd like to be able to run the football and throw short passes and get first down after first down, like you said, as the clock is going down, you know, running down. But Their running uh, attack this year has really been anemic, uh, uh, an offensive line that's young and inexperienced. Aikens back to throw. He's going to be hit, and down he goes. Big tackle coming in. It looked like it may have been thinner, number 52. 55. No, it's Shivers. It's Shivers, Rob yep. Shivers with the tackle. Yep. Shivers no. unblocked off that right side. Uh, he just came all by himself and just met the quarterback. A quarterback's nightmare. They call it blindside. They think they made a movie about that, Bob, if I recall. Yeah, I lived that once or twice <laughs> playing that position. Yeah, you don't see them, and all of a sudden you feel them. You hear that thundering hooves coming towards you, and you just sort of want to duck. Big loss of about six. Bring up a second down and a long 15. Colin Akins. Two touchdown passes on the year. There's a flag right there. Looks like in motion. I, I think, yeah, the Warriors, uh, that's going to cost them five, the five they picked up on the uh, sack. It, uh, I'm not sure. It looked like it was uh, Kershaw and Torres, number 42 jump, but hard to see from over here. Yeah. Five-yard penalty will move it back up to the 20-yard line, and so the five they lost on the sack, they get it back. It is second down and 10. Well, they've really done a nice job with this stadium here. Um, you know, remember the old stadium oh, over yeah. on the other side that used to flood all the time. And, uh -huh. uh, but th this stadium, really nice looking stadium. Talking to athletic director Heather Crawford before the game, and we were going over some of the improvements, just uh, space by space made. That's a nice run by Falston. Looks like that may be a Clavin, Brandon Clavin. Going to pick up about five, make it third down and five. Yep. Yeah, they moved over here, Bob, in 03 from the old field that you were talking about, and the turf was added in 10. The stands came in here in 09. So the Havity Grace community has always been very, very proud of their high school and we'll, we'll work very, very hard to, to upgrade it and do all the things necessary. That was Clavin, by the way, with that uh, running off the right side. He's gonna be stopped for no gain. We'll bring up a fourth down. Yeah, Rich Holly, the late, great Rich Holly, who headed that community project of Haverty Grace that led to the building of the stands and the, you know, many of the improvements you see. He's very much missed. Rich Holly was a good friend of yours and mine you know, for many, many years who taught here. Rich Holly was a gentleman, 
and a man who couldn't do enough for Havity Grace High School and, and the Havity Grace community. Lived in Havity Grace, just loved the town of Havity Grace. Taken from us much too soon, but his memory is still with us, uh, all the things that he did. and. He was the stat man that every week you read in the Aegis all the stats. He was the guy that put them together. Looking for the punt now. Gets off a nice punt, low line drive type punt. He'll go out of bounds at about the 50 yard line. Uh, Akins is the punter, averaging 32 yards a punt. That one only about 20, 25 yards. And that one went from the 25 to the 48. Yeah. Well, the Warriors will set up uh, at the 48-yard uh, line of Falston. Their second possession, 537 left here in the first period. Hey, Dylan's done a great job. We have our monitor working, Bob. Oh, there we go. Life is good. Thank you, Dylan. Hmm. Here we go now. Harvard agrees uh, with our second possession. Alex Griesock, who ran for that 15-yard touchdown, gives to the inside man. Hit and being held, good job by Falston on the tackle. That was Justin Wigan. He got a hold of the runner and didn't let go. Brandon Rabbit was the runner for Have the Grace. You could see Brandon trying to get away, but uh, Justin Wigan, the 6'2", 170-pound junior, said, nope, you're going to stop right here. A loss of about one. Bring up a second down, 11 ball at the 49-yard line. Check at the 48, just about a 10-yard go now for the first down. Yeah, he just brought Jaden um, Hyman back in the ball game for Harry Grace. Hyman, 14 catches, two touchdowns. And, and an excellent reception today for Grisak. Fakes one, looking long, down the right sideline. Got a man just overthrows, looking for Jordan White. White who has seven touchdown catches on the year. Actually, four touchdown catches and three rushing touchdowns. He had his man beaten, but the ball was just a bit overthrown. Yeah. Second down. Third down, check it. Third down and just about 10. Yeah, if he'd have feathered that ball. Here's a replay that you'll be able to see. Not now, but eventually. In his hand, okay. it would have been six. Thanks, Dylan. Dylan is saying that we will have replay later on in the game. Greasock, fake handoff, he keeps the ball right up the middle. He's got the first down, he's got more. He could go all the way. Greasock, second touchdown, 48 yards. Nobody touches him, great faking ability. At the quarterback draw after the fake handoff and straight up the middle. Um, both of these teams are actually running the same offense. It's just the athleticism and the Here's quarterback. Here's the replay, and you'll see that his fake was so good that nobody on the Falston line even saw him coming, and then speed down the middle. Alex Griesock now has 13 touchdowns himself on the year. That was an impressive play, Bob. Yeah, you know, that's, that's a big play in college today that, you know, with the quarterback, you know, the two-man game with the quarterback and the running back faking, faking the guy on a, uh, the guy in motion, you fake to him, you, you just take off up the middle and um, you have quarterback to do that. They're, doing, they're running that play in the NFL now. You know, guys like Cam Newton and, yeah. and, 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 and Russell Wilson and, you know, those kind of quarterbacks are just getting great leverage from, from that play. Chandler Russo adding the extra point, his second on the night. So Greasehawk has two touchdowns. Russo, two extra points. It's 14 to nothing with 4.35 left in the first. Homecoming night here at uh, Haverty Grace, Bob. The stand's pretty much full. The band playing, uh, Rick Hoff. We can't ever say enough about Rick Hoff and his band. And Dave Tramontana, who's sitting right next to me, who's the choral director here at Haverty Grace. We talk about the great music program, Bob, that they have at this school. It's a great program. I, I, I know my daughter went through it. Um, absolutely loved it. Here's Falston with a run back, looking to get some yardage. Caleb Turner with that return, gets it back up to about the 27 yard line. That's where Falston will put it in play. Their third possession. 14-0, 4.27 left in this first period. 
Haverty Grace five and one. Bob, they've won three straight region titles. Last year, losing to Dunbar in the uh, state semifinals, and Dunbar went on to win the state title. Obviously, that's the goal that Brian Everhart and his team has, that long-term goal. Akins with the throw, has his man. It's complete on the far side, up past the 30-yard line. That's a nice catch and nice, nice turn and run. Looked like Jimmy Johnson on the catch. Johnson with 20 catches coming in. Jimmy lacrosse player in the spring, 6'2", 180-pound senior. You know, Howard Grace is a 1A school. That's the smallest of the schools in, in the state of Maryland. Yet the football that is played in 1A at the state level it is, is incredible. The 1A teams in, in the state play very, very good football, and Dunbar is a prime example. Akins with the throw, has a man down the middle, incomplete. Oh, and the flag goes down. Dominic, Joe Dominic, the back judge, says that is pass interference. That will cost a penalty of 10 yards against the uh, Harvard Grace Warriors. There was definitely contact, Bob. I'm not sure he could he could have caught the ball, but he definitely was impeded trying to get his route completed. Yeah, it, there, there was some obstruction there, that's for sure. Um, it's going to cost the, him 15. The question is, did the obstruction happen after the pass went by both the receivers and the backs, or did it happen prior to that and prevent the, the and as Joe Dominic saw it, it happened prior, and so he threw the flag. His opinion is the one that counts. Only one. <laughs> They're paying him tonight. And he's earning his keep. He's earning it. <laughs> First down. The ball near the midfield strike. In motion, Falston. Turn, give, inside. Stop Boy, the Cougars right would away. love to start uh, establish a running game. Uh, Brian, uh, Brandon Claven has averaged only 1.4 yards per carry, not necessarily because Claven's not running well, but the line is so young, Bob. Freshman starter, a sophomore starter on the left side. Yeah, Nikel Glover on the, on the stop there. He just blew that up and met the ball carrier head to head. Big senior. Bob, you look at this team, uh, Haverty Grace has their senior laden team. Uh, well, this is the year that you're preparing for. I mean, three of the four starters on the defensive line are seniors. The other's a junior. You know, of the three linebackers, two of them are seniors and one's a junior. So. Hakins, uh, looks like that ball may have slipped out of his hand a bit. It throws it a bit low. It'll bring up a third down, third down and ten. Well, Don, there are eight seniors starting on defense and three juniors. So that's yeah. as experienced as you can possibly get on, you know, except for three people. You look at, uh, you know, the year that you aim for, Greasock being a senior at quarterback, uh, you know, he is just so talented. Uh, this would be the year if you were having a great to say, you know, this is the year we should go all the way or have a good chance to go all the way. Now I've just jinxed them. Now, I mean, they've had that, <laughs> they've had that for the last three years. I yeah. mean, their offensive line starts four seniors and, and a sophomore center. Aiken overthrows his man. Looked like he uh, pulled the trigger just a bit quickly. Now, Bob, I'll put you in the shoes of Jimmy Grant, the head coach. Uh, you've got the ball at midfield, fourth down and 10. Are you going to punt or are you going to go for it? I'll leave that up to Jimmy. That's a, you know, that's a call <laughs> I'm glad I, ne I never have to make. And the truth of the matter is you're probably better off punting the football. Uh, yeah. You know, territory yeah. becomes becomes important in, in, in a game like this. You, you don't want to make it. You don't want to make it easy for Havre de Grace to get field position and score on you. Well, let's see how the punt turns out now. A whistle blows. Let's see what the officials say. Looks like a timeout on the field. Timeout, Havre de Grace. They weren't quite set up to make that return. Hope you're enjoying this game, Bob. What good weather we're having. This is football weather. Finally, the fall has come. The humidity is gone. It's nice, uh, like crisp, clear night here at uh, Havre de Grace for homecoming. It's a beautiful evening for it. You know, we haven't had one of these. I, I can't tell you since when. Uh, maybe last fall. Maybe. <laughs> And looking around, the stands are pretty much packed with uh, Warrior supporters. Homecoming night, uh, we started this morning. I came over to watch their induction ceremony for the Hall of Fame. Four alumni being inducted into the Harvard Grace Hall of Fame this morning. That was exciting, uh, their homecoming parade coming down Congress Avenue from Hutchins Park, right down past the high school. Just uh, there's nothing like homecoming night 
in high school. As, as they always say here, this is the best kept high school in Harford County. I, I mean, it's best kept secret in Harford County, this high school. Here's the punt. They do a fantastic job here, academically, socially. Low line drive punt picked up on the run. Six. On the move. He could go all the way down that right-hand sideline. That's Jordan White. White untouched down the right sideline. Bob, we said it last week when Edgewood played North Harford. Speed kills. You just can't coach against speed. I mean, that was just easily set up. He picked the football up, cut to the right in the gap, and then turned the corner, and there Here's wasn't the replay. anybody catching him. You'll watch how he just has a lane down that right sideline. Yeah, That's white. Right there, pick it up, hit, the, hit that lane right there. And there left. he goes. And Look at the speed. Untouched, Jordan White goes 75 yards for the touchdown. 3.04 left in the first period, now 20-0. With Chandler Russo on to attempt the uh, point that would make it 21 nothing. So last week against Elkton, Haverty Grace was down 24 nothing in the first period. Now if they convert this point, they're up 21 nothing. What a difference a week makes, huh? Surely does. Elkton's not a bad team. They're not in Haverty Grace's caliber in terms of you know overall talent, but. Uh, like Brian Eberhardt said, it was just like a nightmare. Pick six, pick six. You only get to play once during the year. And yeah. that's whatever happens at the end of that game, whatever the score is, that's who wins. And, you know, you don't get a, a, a do-over. And I think Elkton is 2A, I believe, so they wouldn't play in the playoffs. No. Russo, does it get hits? Oh, no and good. Bounce hits back. the crossbar and bounces back and no good. Uh, I don't know if somebody got a piece of that. That uh, yeah. that wasn't one of his very good kicks, so I, yeah. I don't know if he kicked it well and it got tipped, kicked it a little low, or... It looked like the timing was a bit off. Uh, he didn't get a full kick at it, or somebody may have touched it, so in any event, the score remains at 20 nothing. So Alex Griesach with two touchdown runs, and now Jordan White with a touchdown run. On a punt return, White now has eight touchdowns on the year, four of them receiving, a couple on returns, and one on rushing. 20 nothing to score. We have still got uh, three minutes and four seconds left in this first period. You keep throwing the ball, the clock doesn't move. That's a good point. Yet they don't have the running attack. Falston we're talking about to take time off the clock. No, when you're down 21 nothing, you want to try to get it back. And obviously passing the ball downfield is, is one way, but. Jimmy Johnson with the return up to about the 27 yard line. That's where Falston will put the ball in play. Seth Strang, uh, David Bogosh, Nick uh, Morris, I, uh, Ian Keller, Aaron Gardner across that line. By the way, Aaron Gardner is an Eagle Scout. He and Keller, one of the seniors on the line, 5'11", 250, he is a captain. Bob, that's one of the toughest things when you're with a rebuilding team and you're a senior. Yeah, they're rebuilding for future years, but you know, this is your year. This is the last year you have. I don't know what to say about that because it's the truth. I mean, yeah, it's a tough thing. It is. Shivers, tracks him down again. Boy, that young man, Rob Shivers, he's a big guy. <laughs> he can run. Where's number 55? There's some guy with the Ravens, I think. Uh, T. Sizzle, I believe he calls himself, who has that number. And well, they're going to have to give this this left tackle help. I mean, he's he's trying to he's trying to block Shivers one on one, and Shivers is winning that battle consistently. So you, you might have to get a tight end over there or something to chip him and give him a little ride here or there to help help his tackle out. Loss of three, second down and thirteen. Not her back. Pass complete. Short game. Passes to Nick Curry. Curry picks up about four or five yards on the play. Bob, that's pretty much what Aikens has to do, and that is to throw the ball quickly because he doesn't have a lot of time back well, there. That's why I said they, 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 have to, they have to help the starting left tackle on Shivers because he's just a big, strong kid, and if they're going to leave him one-on-one, -on -one, Shivers is going to win that battle 
you know, probably 70% of the time. Shivers is a, a stand-up player now. In, in other words, he's a linebacker. Sometime he is in the three-point stance. This time he's in a two-point stance. Well, he's actually a defensive end. He's one of the four. He's one of the four yeah. linemen. Except they have they have their two defensive tackles or ends, whatever they call mm -hmm. them. They both stand up. Stand up, yeah. They only put two guys down. And Bob, that's because the. Let's see. Are they they calling a timeout? Are they sending the players off the field momentarily? That's because they don't respect the running attack of Falston. So they realize that. Uh, the only way Falston can beat them or gain yardage is just to throw the ball. Yeah, just pin your ears back and get after the quarterback. Minute 14 left here in this first period. Alex Greesock with a touchdown run of 15 yards at 8.30. Greesock again, a 48-yard run on a quarterback draw play. 14 nothing, and then White uh, on that 75-yard uh, uh, punt return. If you want to slow down a defensive pass for us, what you usually do is run some draws, run some screens, uh, you know, flare to back out of the backfield and hit them quickly and see if you can run past or get into an open area. Third down and nine. Akins rolling. He was throwing on the run. Has his man complete. That's C.J. Turner. Close to the first down. I think it might be enough for the first down. Let's see. It's out to about the 38. Yeah, that's a first down for Good sure. Good first down. That's a nice run. Running the ball to his right-hand side, the strong side where he throws. He found Turner, hit him with a good pass. Turner, just a sophomore, now has 15, 16 catches on the year. That was a nice little out route. And rolled the quarterback to the right and made a nice throw, hit him on the run. Aiken's a second year starter at quarterback. Unfortunately for Falston, he is a senior, so he won't be around next year as his team hopefully rebuilds. Clavin with the ball. He's gonna be hit right in the middle of the line. Very little gain there. Well, Nikel Glover and Keyshawn Torres in the middle of that line. What the, what the down four for Have the Grace is doing basically is they run into the offensive lineman and they hold him to see if, if it's not a pass, then they just hold the offensive line up and then when the kid, the running back comes to them, they just get off and make the tackle and if it's a pass, then they take off and go after the quarterback. So they're, they're obviously dominating the line of scrimmage right now. 30 seconds left in the first period. No gain on the play, second down and 10. A pistol formation, Aikens with the ball, being rushed, Shivers has his man, that's complete. Pass to Nick Curry, Curry has the first down. Nice catch, nice run, good completion by Falston. It was, it was a nice play by Falston. What they did was they sent two people heading in the same direction, one five yards behind the other, and so half the race players backed up for the deeper guy, and then the underneath man cut across, turned and, and, and ran a post pattern, inside post pattern, and just was, was open, and nice throw. Caught the football, and you know, Enough of a gain for the first down. And that is the end of the first period. Boy, you give that line some credit too, Bob. He didn't have to hold them long, but they're holding them long enough for the uh, receivers to get that short pass pattern done. Yeah, and it, 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 it didn't look like on that play that Havre Grace defensively brought anybody except they're down four. And, they, and the Falston players blocked it that time and, and gave him a chance to make that throw. So we'll be a first down as we come back for the second period of play. As you see the score, 20 to nothing, Havre de Grace, uh, all Havre de Grace as we had expected because they are a very talented team. Uh, again, you look at last year, Havre de Grace, Bob lost just one game in the regular season, that to Edgewood. Uh, as you know, they've circled that date. Edgewood will be coming here in two weeks. That is after they get past C. Milton Wright, if they can. Uh, Edgewood with just the one loss to Linganore early in the year. So so you'd be facing, if that occurs, in the, uh, what, eighth week of the season, two seven and one teams. Yeah, I, you know, first of all, Harry Grace better not look past C. Milton Wright next week. Yes. Uh, you know, so, I mean, in high school, you you have to take them one football game at a time because you don't play that many. And while you're looking for someone else, you can get your head beat in. <laughs> Just ask uh, Havre de Grace about that game against Elfton last week. Clavin, boy, Clavin gets the ball and he also gets a handful of Keyshawn Torres, number 42. Yeah. And number 52, uh, Jesse Fenner. 
and the middle That's linebacker right also there closing. Made, right well, there made a stop. Bob, you look at these, uh, Jordan White with uh, now seven interceptions, Jaden Hyman with uh, five interceptions. Jesse Finner, the young man you talked about, has an interception. Well, you've got you, the first two players you talked about, White and, and, and Hyman, I mean, they're great receivers. Yeah. And they're back on defense, and boy, they're ball hawks. And they can see the quarterback's eyes, and if they throw it anywhere, where they're right there to take that and go. Not sure. The uh, snap was supposed to be made. Everybody thought it was going to be snapped, but uh, center Nick Morris said, uh, I'm not ready to snap it. So... I think that's going to cost Falston five yards. It is, or it should. We haven't mentioned Josh Mergler, number 14, the senior for Harvard Grace, their linebacker. Two sacks, 13 and a half tackles a game, two interceptions. They are just, you look at that team, Bob, and they are just studded with stars. We're talking about the Warriors. Well, kids make plays. I mean, they bring Mergler a lot, six sacks. I mean, here, here's, here's a right side, outside linebacker. And you can see he comes off of the same side that Shivers comes off of. Uh -huh. So who are you going to block or who are you going to double if you, you know, if you have to block somebody? You got to block Shivers. <laughs> and so Mailer, he, you know, he, he can come in sometimes untouched. Loss of five on that pass. Has his man. It's going to be complete. Tackled right at the 50-yard line. That was tackled by number 34. Joe the, the completion goes to C.J. Turner. I'm trying to get the... Yeah, Haverty Grace has their uh, lineup in uh, alphabetical order, which makes it a little more of a challenge. In their lineup, I don't see a number 34 on the roster. So Dave, I wonder if that's Magler. Dave Montrano, is it 34? Is that... Uh, is that Magler by any chance? Do you see a 14? Who is it? It's Joe Martin. Yeah, there is a 34. He's hiding oh, it's there. Yeah, Joe Martin. Okay, yeah. that's it, yep. There we go. Third down and about 12 yards to go for the first down. Being rushed, Akins backs out, throws on the run, has a man, it's gonna be complete, that's Turner. Turner shakes one tackle, but doesn't get rid of the other one. Ball at about the 41, about five yards short of the first down. You see why Turner plays as a sophomore. I mean, he's quick, he, you know, when you, you look at guys like uh, Julian Edelman, uh, Willie Sneed, of, of, yeah. you know, little, almost like flanker type guys, they're small and quick and run in and out quickly and, you know, once you hit them, they step back and try to scoot around you before you can tackle them. And he has good hands. 5'9", 160 pounds. Again, just a sophomore. He's a budding star for this team. They're going to go for it, Bob. Fourth down and five. Big decision here. Ball at the 42-yard line of Haverty Grace. Got to get inside about the 37. Looking. Has a man caught, caught and dropped. Just a little bit behind uh, Jimmy Johnson. Johnson turned and tried to make the catch, but couldn't haul it in, and that'll be Downs now will go over to Haverty Grace. Yeah, that was, that was a, a, a tough play. I mean, he, he was open, and like you said, the throw was just behind him, and he just couldn't get both hands together to catch the football. You can tell how disappointed he is. He did turn, he did get his hands on the ball. Very difficult when you're going in one direction, expecting to be hit at any moment to be able to pull that ball in. Well, the ball was behind him at his hip level, and sometimes that can be difficult. 42-yard line, Haverty Grace will take over. First and 10, 9-16 left in the half. Grisak throws, has a man, that's White. White makes the catch at the 45-yard line. You know, one, of, one of the things I, that uh, I, I want to give the Falson coaching staff credit for, you know, you know, their kids are 0-5 at this point, but they're out, they're out here playing as hard as they can and giving everything they have out here tonight. I mean, they're, they're, they're trying to make plays, they're getting after it, they don't have their heads down, they're playing football, and um, give their coaching staff a lot of credit for that. Yeah, absolutely, and their players as well. Easy to say this team is just too good, too fast. They're not uh, giving any. There's that quarterback uh, draw. This time it doesn't work. Good job by Falston staying at home. Yeah. Looks like big number 50. 59, it looked like. 59. Yeah, it is 59. And that would be Nick O'Neill. Stayed at home that time and made the tackle for uh, no gain on the play. Second down and 10. That was the play that Greasehock scored on in the first period. Jared Clayton, Ryan Langlotz, uh, Chris Wilson, Alex Bailey, those linebackers. 
Greasock, second and 10, back to throw. Throws it long, his arm is hit as he throws. Down he goes, pass is incomplete. Look like 59 again, it not was. hit the arm, yeah. Nick O'Neill, yeah, yeah, that's two plays in a row. Nick is a 6'1", 250 pound junior. Two great plays in a row by O'Neill. They'll bring up a third down and 10. Boy, this would be a nice stop for Falston if they can do it. Inside eight minutes now left in this uh, second period of play. Sure would be. I mean, they went for it on fourth down, and you, you worry about having a grace just making a drive and putting more points on the board, but... Greasock hands it off. Hit and held in the backfield. Looks like no, uh, that Greasock held on to the ball. I think he was trying to hand it off to Brandon Rabbit. End up holding the ball and losing yardage back almost to the 50-yard line. It's fourth down now. Now we're... See if Hager Grace is going to punt the football. If you're Brian Eberhardt, uh, you know, do you keep the hammer down and figure I can pick up 15 yards on fourth down? Well, even if I turn it over, Bob, Falston hasn't shown that they can move the ball. Uh, but that's what he's going to do. He's going to go for it. Yep. Greasock, rabbit in the backfield with him in the pistol formation. It's still the first half, and, you know, you, you have to keep putting points on the board. Greasock looking, throwing. It's going to be caught. Beautiful catch up in the air. And making that catch was Tom Meehan Jr. Meehan catches it at the 30-yard line for the first down. Boy, what a bunch of athletes. We haven't mentioned Tommy Meehan Jr.'s name. That pass was a beautifully thrown pass, but it was high. Meehan had to go up at the top of the angle and make that catch. Tommy Meehan has two touchdowns already this year. So, I mean, he, he's caught the football for them this year. Bunch of weapons they have, talking about the Warriors. First down and 10, ball at the 25-yard uh, line. Pass, just a bit wide that time. This is White. Jordan White, we talked about the college. Here's Jordan White, a preseason top 10 first uh, uh, player to watch by the Baltimore Sun. First team up back last year. Looking at Buffalo, Old Dominion, Syracuse, Wake Forest, Stony Brook, Holy Cross. Those are some nice colleges. Nice schools in there, yeah. Obviously, Syracuse being the, the highest ranked of, of those schools uh, football-wise, uh, but a lot of solid, solid football schools in there at different levels. Six play drive started back at the 42. There's the handoff on the run. Coming around that side, that's me and Junior. Short yardage. Seven play drive started back at the 42 yard line of Haverty Grace. Clock running inside six minutes and 30 seconds. Third down and about four. Warriors have to get to the 16 for a first down. I like what the Havre Gray staff is doing here right now. They're, they're, they're dominating running the football. I mean, they had to throw the football to get the first down, but now they're coming back and they're handing the football off, eating the clock up and, and hoping they get a score right before the half ends. Greasock, that's White. White jukes one man, gonna be hit and taken down at the 16 yard line, yeah. close to the first down. Uh, that is a first down. Tackle made by Nick Curry, right at the first down marker. Officials haven't given a signal yet. It looks like now they have first down and 10. 5.59 left here in this first half. Bob was talking to uh, coach uh, Jimmy Grant and he said he looked at the Harvard Grace's play tendencies. They run the ball 51% of the time and throw it 49% of the time. So he was really impressed, not only with their ability, but the fact they're so balanced. Well, they have athletes at all those positions. And, and, you know, the offensive line's doing a nice job blocking and... Greasock looking for open. the end zone, has a man. It's gonna be, oh, Drops. knocked away just at the wow. last moment. Looked like Curry came in and maybe got a hand on it. Uh, if not, if he didn't deflect it, then he... It was, Jay, it was Jaden Hyman who had, no. looked like he had the ball right in his hands. Either either the, the hands of the defender kind of took, made him, made him take his eye off the ball for a second, but it did hit him in the hands. Well he, thrown uh, pass, he was yeah, open he in was the end zone. Open, yeah. But good closing there by, uh, and by he's Nick a, Curry. He's had a really good night tonight, Hyman. Greasock hands it off to Rabbit. He's going to be hit and held in the backfield. 
good tackle made by uh, Falston. It was Alex Bailey with that tackle. No gain on that play. Bailey averaging seven tackles a game. Boy, this has been a 10-play drive. He's really eaten up a lot of time, which is not characteristic for, for, for uh, Haverty Grace. They normally are a big team, I mean a big play team. Well, if you catch the ball in the end zone, drives over. <laughs> Five minutes, seven seconds, now counting inside five minutes left in the half. And like I said, Falston ha has not stopped playing. They're playing very hard. And so, you know, giving them credit, giving the players in Falston credit and the coaches credit right here. Third down and 10, pistol formation. Greesock rolling our way, throwing the ball, has his man complete. That's Hyman. Hyman is gonna be taken off his feet inside the 10 yard line. I think it's short of a first down. Yeah, he has, has to get down to about the six. So it's fourth end. Player down for Falston. Timeout on the field. And this is one of the problems when you don't have a lot of players. 28 uh, players on the roster. Can we say it every time, Bob, you and I go back in the coaching days when there were not trainers uh, available and we had to be our own, uh, you know, trainers and medical people and we weren't qualified to do that. It's so good and so comforting to know that if there is an injury, there is a professional trainers, people who have medical expertise to be able there and take care of the, uh, of the injury. The, the native trainers. There you see the, some of the crowd here. Bob and I up here, that's me waving. Hi, Mom. <laughs> uh, up on his uh, feet and being helped off the field. That's always good to see. I think we uh, sometimes, Bob, forget these are amateur athletes, uh, high school kids who this is part of their growing up experience. And the one thing you pray for is that they get out of the game without any serious injuries. That's, that's all you ask at the end of the football game. You want everybody to be healthy. Four minutes, 35 seconds left in the half. We are now facing a fourth down and two. Looks like the Warriors are gonna go for it. They're not gonna bring in their field goal kicker. They're looking for that first down. Greesock hands it to Rabbit up the middle. I think he's got it. He does, he's down to the five. He needed to get to the six. Boy, nice quick hitter there. First and goal at the five yard line, 12 play drive. Bob, this uh, drive started with just over 10 minutes, uh, you know, left in the half, and now we're winding down inside four minutes. That's a nice six-minute drive, and still have time to run off another minute if they want. White to pass, Greesock, touchdown. Or if they don't, they just want to score. <laughs> <laughs> or on the other hand, let's see who made that catch. Looks like a, there's a flag down on the field, I think. They're going to hold it back here for uh, just a moment. Jamod Stansbury. And it looks like, not sure, I don't see the, the official sign on the field. It, I'm not sure, was it, was it? Penalty on the field? No, I'm, I'm looking at the receiver. Illegal motion against the Warriors is the call. Well, it doesn't matter now, it's back. So wipe that uh, touchdown play off. And now, Bob, it brings up a more interesting situation where with the... Second and 10 now for second goal. Yeah, second and goal, the ball back at the 10. Yeah. So wipe out that touchdown. 20 nothing, the score remains. In motion, White. Give to White, around that right corner. Jukes one man, jumps a tackler, gonna be hit and taken out of bounds. Nice tackle. It really was, just about when it looked like White was gonna dive across. Another flag down. Got down to about the one or maybe two. They're talking to Falston, so it looks like it may be against the Warriors. Uh, some sort of a blocking penalty. Blocking. Illegal block against the Warriors. It's going to be a big one against the Warriors. Looked like holding. I, I didn't. I didn't see him put both hands out and say there was a blocker. 
<laughs> yeah, he did call a block in the back. Yeah, it's going to be a 10-yard penalty back to the 15. So leave it at first down, first and goal at the 15. Two big penalties against the Warriors. One took a touchdown away. The other took a run down to the one away. There you see Brian Everhart, the coach, uh, not happy about that. Greasock being rushed, avoids a tackler, and now he's going to be hit and held. Chris Wilson, the second man through, making the tackle. Chris is very happy about Alex that. Greasock, the ball carrier, off of the play, nice bring play. up second down. Bring up second down at the uh, 21, second and goal from the 21. Bob, you mentioned it, Falston, give them the credit. They're down 20 nothing, and, you know, overwhelmed in terms of size and strength and speed. Well, they, they obviously feel like they're still in this football game. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, they have belief in themselves. And he, even though they're 0-5, um, you know, like I said, obviously the coaching staff is, is, is having a tremendous effect on this team. And, and the kids are obviously good kids and, and working as hard as they can. Greasock looking, has a man, overthrows his man. Good job, uh, good Wagen. pressure there. Yeah, Wagen, he, he's, been, he's been in there a few times. Yeah, Passes Justin Wagen, the 670 pound junior. 14 play drive now. Falston had the ball for three plays and then lost on downs on the fourth play here in the second period. And it's been all high degree since then. They started at the 42 yard line, progressed down to the one. In fact, they got the touchdown, but that was wiped out. Coming up on, what, seven and a half minutes, they held the clock here. Third down, 21 yards to go for the 21 and goal, I should say. First and goal, third and goal from the 21. In a little bit of road, throwing the ball on the run. Yeah, it's tough. That's tough. Pass to throw for you your left, and in your right hand, you have to throw, come across back and we'll across the back down. of your body to, to zip that ball. And, I remember the first game we did of the year, John Carroll, a young man whose name is escaping me, who threw that ball like 50 yards in the air. That way, yes. Rolling left. And, but most know. people don't do that. You can't no. do that. No. And that was the uh, the substitute quarterback, the, the junior, I believe, right. who threw the ball. Yeah, he can throw the ball. Now it looks like they're going to attempt the field goal. They eschewed the field goal some time ago. This time they're going to kick it apparently from the 27, which would make it a 37 yard field goal. Timeout by Haverty Grace. Now yes. here's a question for you Will they attempt to block this field goal and knock it down and try to get Remember to stay tuned for our half half. But if they don't do that and they rough the kicker, then they're back in the. <laughs> And you know, that's a call that, that Coach Grant has to make. Chandler Russo, the, the kicker who's made two extra points, the, the third extra point was either blocked or the timing was off. He missed the third one. You always remember you, you have to have a good snap, a good catch and holds, and a good kick. And good, and and good blocking. And blocking go all red. Absolutely. And a lot of things can go wrong. Homecoming court members, number 16, please Chandler report Russell, the junior kicker. Homecoming court members, please report Now he's moved it back to the 33 or 28. So it will be a 38 yard attempt. Yes. He wants that extra yard, I guess. Greasock is the uh, holder, so he does put it down. The kick is up. Oh, it oh, looks good. Very good. Very nice. That distance. kick could have been good from 40 yards. Yeah, and it is good. Yep. A 38-yard field goal by Chandler Russo. Like I told you earlier, Don, Havre Grace has always had kids who could kick the football. And this is another one. Bob, that was a perfect snap, a perfect hold, and uh, great blocking. And the kick was, again, he could have been good from 45 yards out. Yeah, my theory was when I was playing quarterback in high school was I want the second string quarterback to hold for those because, extra points. Because that's where the trouble is. Somebody's going to come in and. It's a lot of pressure to catch that oh, football and I put see. it down. You know, it's, it's, Tony, it's tough. Tony Romo would agree with that it's back tough, in the, the playoff you. game that he fumbled the snap and cost the uh, Cowboys a chance to win that playoff game. You look now at, in the NFL, almost every holder is the punter. Yeah. 
Cook for the uh, Ravens, who's uh, just one of the very best. Uh, and Justin Tucker is not a bad kicker. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's my understatement of the year. 23 nothing as you see the score. Two minutes and 41 seconds left in the half. Halston looking to, that's that's a nice little alley there. Good run by Jimmy Johnson, still on his feet up to the 40 yard line. Jimmy Johnson's a tough Jimmy kid who plays really hard. Jimmy's got some size. He's 6'2", 180 pound senior. He plays that sport that uh, Frank Mazzanotti claims is the best sport in the world, lacrosse. Frank. Sure, Frank would say that. <laughs> Frank, who is the one of the new Hall of Fame members of Edgewood High School, our good buddy and our former partner, who now is in South Carolina playing footsie with Dabo Sweeney. <laughs> Maybe it's not footsie he's playing, but at least he's a pal of Dabo Sweeney. Frank was, um, he did a tremendous job creating a lacrosse program at Edgewood High School for yep. 12 years. Three state champions in 12 years. Yeah, and in a place that didn't have a program before that and has struggled in that sport since then. And, and what really impressed me was his old players were there uh, for the induction and they just adore him. Here's a handoff inside for Falston. I mean, you know, a coach likes nothing better than to have someone come up and say something nice. Talking to Paul Metzger today, our partner, a former um, work experience student of his came up to him the other day and said how much uh, that he had meant to this person, this, this young lady, in terms of developing that person. You know, going back 30 years. Nothing warms the cockles of a former teacher's heart than to have someone come up and say that. Nothing. That's what it's all about. Second down and nine. Colin Aiken's going all the way at quarterback, back to throw, looking, has a man up the middle, has his man, that's Montgomery, he's free. Down the middle of the field, that's not Montgomery, but instead it is a touchdown. And that is uh, Alex Bailey, number 12, who makes the catch, avoids a tackle and goes in for the touchdown. That is a 40, a 60 yard touchdown play from Colin Aikens to uh, Alex Bailey, wow. And that's why you keep playing like they do. Here's the replay, you'll yeah. see. He avoids that one tackle, yeah. and then it's all Mr. Bailey down the center of the field. Akins to Bailey. Touchdown, Falston, 23-6. And to attempt the extra point for Falston. Well, snapped high, but the kick is up and good. Well, that was a great play by the holder. He jumped up, grabbed that ball, and put it down. And, and Connor Pickle kicked it through, so Pickle has the extra point. Make it 23 to seven, wow. Now that's their reward for continuing to play hard and having belief. It was a great pass play. First of all, hitting uh, on the run, and then uh, shaking the tackle. Bailey goes in for the touchdown. Alex Bailey, who has a 4.55 GPA, plays baseball, had 13 catches coming in. Now he's got his first touchdown of the year on a brilliant play. So just like that, Falston says, hey, we ain't done. Well, maybe they didn't say we ain't done. No. That wouldn't be proper. No, they have an excellent English department at Falston They do, yes, they and do. So they're not going to say that. They might, just for emphasis. Oh. Yeah for a colloquialism just to that whatever that word is means that you just used I told you keep your vocabulary and things that I can understand what was that a colloquialism wow well if it'll help I can't spell it how about that Tom? would I help you uh, great play there I, I would like to thank my 12th grade teacher Mr. Chuck Marsden for teaching me words like that. Charles In P. Charles, Marzen, you know, he learned me good. He really did. That ball looks like it maybe touched a Harvard Grace player. Does It goes out of bounds, and I don't think it did touch. And that's a tough one with 136 left. You don't want to give Harvard Grace good field position and they could score again before the period's over. Well, they were trying to, I mean, it was, they were trying to get the, you know, the onside kick. And, and, and uh, unfortunately, the ball picked up speed and rolled a little quicker to get out of bounds. but. I, and I don't understand the Havre race players because if they don't touch that, if they don't fall on that and it stays in bounds, that's a free ball. Yeah. 
They're saying illegal procedure against Falston. Sure. And that'll give uh, Haverty Grace the ball at the 42 yard line, 43 yard line. So somehow they weren't lined up right, Falston. No, I think they're just calling the ball went out of play mm. and they're going to give Haverty Grace the ball at their at their place rather than yeah, where it went out oh, of bounds. Oh, yeah, because usually it would be at the 40. Yeah. So since it went out before that, they, they give him the, 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 the distance that it happens. So now Haverty Grace has a chance to come right back and get that score back that they just gave up. Alex Griesach, little screen pass. Boy, is that set up nicely. Rabbit. Looking to try to avoid the tackle, but it's going to be hit and taken out of bounds. And Bob Brandon McMahon, you called the name Justin Weekend again, making the tackle. The it is a first down for having a grace. I don't, I don't know why Brandon was trying to stay in bounds to fight for more yards when he really needed to get out of bounds and stop the clock and you give Harvey Grace more time for, for more plays here. The clock stopped momentarily with the moving of the chains, but now it's running again with a minute 18 and counting left in the first half. Flankers two to the near side, two to the far side, driving in the backfield with Greesock. Greesock, that quarterback draw again, gets rid of one tackle. It's gonna be hit and held though. It looks like Johnson making the tackle. Runs for five more yards. Clock still running at 53 seconds. It does uh, pause momentarily to move the chains. Yeah, and Happy Grace is lined up ready to go here as soon as they put the ball down. Clock there, hasn't started yet. There he goes. They're going to start it and go and right now. Now the clock starts, and here we go. Greesock. Took him less than three seconds to get the. Hits Jordan White on the far side. White goes down the far sideline, stays in bounds, down to the 25-yard line. Now they can run up to the line again, and the clock stops. In high school, the clock stops after the first down. Check it down to the 15-yard line. So it's first and goal at the 15. 41 seconds. The clock will start here just in a moment when the officials mark it ready, and there it is, 40 seconds. Greesock rolling this way. Flag goes down. And he just throws it out of bounds. It's going to be, it's going to be holding against Harry Grace. That's going to cost them 10. You know, that was on the back side and away from the play. Yeah. I mean, I know the officials have to call it, but you, you, you scratch your head and say, hey, that doesn't have anything to do with the play. Well, first of all, if you're an offensive guy on the back side, yeah. there's no sense <laughs> you holding the guy. That's when you, you're showing the film on Monday or Tuesday and you just want to hide. <laughs> Coach, that's not me. Yeah, I had a player actually tell me that once. Tell you what? That it wasn't him. <laughs> Although it was his number? Oh, no, it was his face and it was <laughs> his body. And it, was, it was his number, everything. Did you buy it? Coach, that wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> it was a double out there. Greesock with a fumble, comes back, picks it up, avoids a tackle. Now he throws the ball, gets rid of it. It's going to be caught. Caught by White. He's going in for the touchdown. I don't believe that play. Oh my goodness, he was everything but down. He throws the ball, White catches it, and goes in from 17. Here's the replay, you'll see. Now you tell me how he got rid of that ball, Bob. What I don't understand is I would have felt there would have been an offensive lineman downfield by that time. You watch how he rolls left here, fumbles the ball first, picks it up, almost gets tackled, almost gets tackled, now throws it on the run, wide open, and cutting back for the touchdown, Jordan White. So it is a 12 yard touchdown pass. Russo up with the extra point. Pass from Greesock to White for 12 yards. So with 19 seconds left in the half, indeed, Haverty Grace does come back and avenge that touchdown, makes it 30 to seven here with just 19 seconds left before the half. Yeah. Penalty goes against Paulston. I'm not sure what that is. Will be assessed on the kickoff. Alex Griesack, again, we talked about his uh, academic achievement, 4.3 GPA with a 1410 out of 1600 SAT. And all the colleges that are looking at him, uh, and he's looking at playing football uh, and also going in engineering. 
so you know he has the you know the smarts to be able to pull that play off but the awareness he had bob to keep his head up when he had tacklers all around him yeah. and give jordan white credit he realized his you know, quarterback was in some problems so he came back to the ball and then it was all athletic ability as he caught the ball. Instead of going out of bounds, he cut it back in and made the touchdown run. The, the schools that Greesock are looking at are, are outstanding academic schools, engineering schools. Uh, he could choose any one of those and not be wrong um, from, a, from an academic standpoint. From so a football standpoint, he has to do some research into them, find out how many quarterbacks that they have back if that's what he wants to play. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. at what point will he get a shot to get on the field or, or will they expect him to, to get on the field uh, kind of thing? So or are they looking at him as a defensive back or a wide receiver? What, you know, each of those schools will have. And I know each of them have a football program where they have 70 to 80 players on, on, the, yeah. on the team. You know, so yeah. it's, it's especially the quarterback position, it's, it's difficult. Two touchdowns rushing tonight, and Greesock now has a touchdown passing. Also a 75-yard touchdown run on a punt return by Jordan White. Thirty to seven here with the time running out in the first half. Homecoming night at Haverty Grace High School, the Warriors. Uh, Bob, well, we have two more years of the old school, the new school being built right behind us where we're sitting here in this booth, the middle high school. Uh, it, you know, it, it's just one of those things the community has worked for, and now they'll get that brand spanking new school, the oldest school in the county in terms of the high school. Uh, I, I'm not sure when the school was built, sometime back in the 30s probably. I, I know they've made renovations you mm -hmm. know, a couple times after that. And, yeah. and actually, it's a two-building school. They have building across the street from, you know, the, the, the gymnasium and the, and the music departments are all across the street. And they're beautiful. I'm just not sure what the plans are. Pass, complete, caught, and then knocked down for a very little gain. I think that was uh, Jimmy Johnson again with the catch. Clock running down three seconds, two seconds, and that looks like it will be the last play of the first half. That is the last play of the first half. Our score here at halftime, 30 to seven, as Haverty Grace leads on homecoming night. We'll come back with the second half in just a moment. Well, we're back with you at Haverty Grace High School. Uh, Bob McCone, just a tremendous halftime uh, homecoming court. Uh, the king and queen were announced. Uh, um, Greesock, uh, the quarterback, won it for as King Alex Greesock and Dave Tromontan. Diamond Potts. Diamond Potts was the female. She's the queen, uh, and she got the headdress and the whole thing. It was kind of cool. Absolutely. It's always great night homecoming at Happy Grace High School. Nice to see the football quarterback uh, coming out at halftime after the coach has probably given him his uh, little speech, and now he walks the queen out to, unbeknownst to them, they didn't know it, and they were the surprise announcement. Diamond Potts was a little bit excited. A little bit. And the yeah. other football player who came out was Josh Magler. He was on the court. Yeah. So yeah. good to see. Uh, yeah, great deal. Well, we're ready for the second half. And again, Bob, you and I were talking off air. We're so impressed with Falston, a team that is outclassed in terms of talent, in terms of size, in terms of numbers. Uh, they didn't give up. They played hard the whole time and scored that touchdown late in the half, uh, a very nice touchdown pass. And so they're not in the ball game, but at least they're hanging close, hanging as close as they can. Like I said in, in, in the first half, I mean, I've been impressed with the, with their attitude, their uh, their attention to detail from their coaching staff. Um, you know, they're in position to make plays. Yeah. Um, talent wise, it's a, it's a different thing. You know, yeah. they they get a few kids who, who can make the play play after play, but they don't have enough of them. Yeah. But that doesn't stop them from playing their hearts out. And and, and obviously it hasn't stopped the coaching staff from believing in them and, 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 and working very hard with them. So. You know, I'm very impressed with Faustin. Here we go, the second half starting. That ball was supposed to be a squib kick, but it came right to the young man from Haverty Grace, number 25. And you'll have to pardon me as we look through our numbers because they're arranged alphabetically. 
Mitchell. Oh, that was uh, Mitchell Villarreal who caught the ball on the fly right at the 40 yard line. And so that's where Harvard Grace will put the ball in play first and 10 from their own 43 yard line. Alex Greesock going all the way at quarterback. Uh, two touchdowns running, one touchdown passing. Jordan White, uh, two touchdowns, uh, one on a 75-yard uh, punt return, the other on a pass late in the half. Greesock, There's the whistles blow, and uh, play is stopped. Now, Falls is taking a little different approach here, Don. They, they just put pretty much uh, six guys up on the line of scrimmage, and they brought them all trying to get to uh, Alex Greesock. Now, the problem with that is this uh, warrior D, this warrior offense is so diversified. You can stop one thing, but then they hit you with another. Well, obviously Coach Grant feels what they did in the first half wasn't you know, specifically successful, so he's trying something else here. Greesock and the pistol. And there they come. There's the fumble, but somehow, and the referee blows it dead because I think the quarterback's knee was down when he had the ball. And so Harry DeGrace going backwards uh, here early in the second half. Falson has come out here, fired up defensively, and they're getting after Harry DeGrace, and it's, you know, they, they drew a penalty on the first play, and, and, and now they get a, I guess they would have to call that a sack on the second play. Yeah, second down and about 17. Warriors have to get up past the midfield stripe to the 47 yard line of Falston for the first down. Now Falston's in a, in a. They're coming again. Here comes Greesock on that quarterback draw. Breaks through the first line of tacklers, but doesn't get through the second, taken down at the 35. Gains two yards. <laughs> Looks like Chris Wilson in on the tackle. So the second half starts rather slowly for Haverty Grace. Uh, going a bit backwards, third down and about, uh, yeah, it looks like about 16. Greesock rearranging, Shivers moves to one side. Brandon Stokes to the other. Here they come again, bringing six. Oh, good pass, good completion. Jordan White dodging, staying on his feet, gets up near the 50-yard line. And that's short. That's about three, four yards short of the first down. Brings up a fourth down and about three. Now we'll find out if Harry Grace is going to punt. Looks like they're sending the punt team on. <laughs> Got to get, uh, they're just about at their own 49. They've got to get to the 47. So Coach Brian Eberhardt uh, elects to punt the ball away, at least apparently so. Nice high booming punt. Ball will hit and roll dead at about the 20 yard line. <laughs> Falston will take over as they're able to stop Harvard Grace so, and force the punt. That's Jordan Watt, their excellent wide receiver punting the football for them. Yeah. That ball was kicked almost out of the light view. Uh, <laughs> nice high booming punt. So the ball will be at the 20-yard line. Give Falston credit. They come out and they stop the Warriors on the first possession here in the second half. Nine minutes, 40 seconds. Clock stopped as the teams change sides. Colin Aiken's going all the way at quarterback for Falston. Done a nice job. Looking to throw. Has a man oh, off his fingertips. Looking for C.J. Turner. Boy, the Warriors bob our ball hawks back there. You look at uh, Jordan White has uh, six interceptions coming in. Five interceptions for Jaden Hyman. Two interceptions for Josh Mergler. I mean, the ball's in the air. They're the ones going for it. Yeah, just looking at that play, one of the things that Falson is doing is is they're running two kids in, into the same place, one a little bit behind the other, and, and are actually having the the lead receiver almost being a, a, a screen for the guy behind him, and, and they had they had a chance for the catch in yards there, except he didn't catch the football. High pass, a bit over the outstretched hands of Nick Curry, throwing up third down. <laughs> Colin Akins, uh, the senior quarterback, 
completed 56 passes coming in, 48%, two touchdowns, 588 yards, seven interception throws. Boston 0-5 on the year. They've been in some games, just haven't been able to break through. Well, you know, I'm impressed what they're doing technically. I, I, I mean, they're, they're, they're running good stuff. They're, they're putting their kids in position and they're just getting out talented, but, but they're not giving up on anything. They're working their hearts out here. Third down. Akins breaks through, gets around one side. He's looking for the first down and goes out of bounds just around the 30 yard line. Had to get to the 30 for the first down. Let's see if he made it there. Looks a little short. Just about a yard short. It will bring up a fourth down. I think if Colin looks at the film, he'll realize that maybe one more step forward, he could have picked up that first down. There you see Jimmy Grant. And he could have. The first year, I say first year coach, he's been at it 23 years at uh, Falston. Assistant to Dave Seske. Give Dave Seske, I mean, a, a couple of shout outs, uh, Bobby. Started in 1977 at Falston and was coaching through last year. My math is not real good, but that's like 40 years. Well, if it's 1977, yep, that's about 40 years. <laughs> he took one year off of, for health reasons a couple of years ago that Jimmy Grant filled in as the head coach, but came back and uh, now has uh, officially retired. Still there as the athletic director. We uh, talked with him, Bob, back in the day at Aberdeen. Way back in the day. <laughs> oh, yes, that was a couple of boons ago. It had to be my first or second year. Fourth down there going for it, Bob. Here's the pass. It's going to be complete. And he's still on the feet. There he goes down the sideline. That's Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson tackled from behind by White. What a play. First of all, to go for the first down on fourth and one. And then for Johnson to catch it. It looked like they, here comes the replay, Bob. It looks like they almost forgot to tackle him. Well, they hit him, but he's a strong, tough kid. And Here's the replay. He bounced out of it and was gone. There's the catch. Right I mean, there. he's tackled, but yeah. there he goes. Well, they didn't wrap him up. They put the arms around him, but they never wrapped him. And the great tackle from behind made by Jordan White. Uh, Jordan White being the athlete is, and Jimmy Johnson being a good athlete. I mean, Jordan White had the run just in the all he could get was his ankles. Well, let's give uh, Jimmy Grant a lot of credit to go for that first down. I mean, you're way in your own territory at your 29 yard line. He goes for it and gets it. Johnson made the catch and I think Johnson was willing to go down. He figured I got the first down. This guy's, if he wraps me up, I'll just go down here. But he didn't and so he continued going. Yeah, well, he kept fighting like, he, like he's played so far this game. Yeah. That was a strange play. Uh, first of all, a great play by Falston and a nice pass by Aikens and a nice catch by uh, Johnson. But it looked like he was wrapped up and about to go down, Bob, but he, he didn't. Wrapped, he wasn't wrapped up. That was the thing. Yeah. The kid kind of put his arms on him and then, you know, never squeezed or held or, and then he just took off again. And then Jordan White ran and ran him down, but just about got him. And give Jordan White a lot of credit. I mean, he, he did. Again, it was, a, it was a weird play because it almost looked like nobody on the Harvard Grace team thought that he was free, un unless it was Jordan White, the only one. So here we go, first and 10 at the 16 yard line for Harvard Grace on that big pass play from Akins to uh, Jimmy Johnson. Handoff inside. In the, uh, rabbit, was that right? Uh, it was 32. 32, yeah. Yeah, and that Connor was uh, Pickle. Connor Pickle, who is normally the uh, extra point kicker in playing fullback. Was it 32 or 22? No, I think it was 32 on that. <laughs> yeah, Clavin is 22. I'm sorry that uh, the numbers seem to run together down there. We're about 50 yards away from the play. Clavin's in the backfield now. What's that? No gain on the play. Second down and 10. The ball again at the 22. Akins to throw. Rolling out. Now throws. Into the end zone. Was that picked off? Intercepted, yes. Looks like five. 
Here comes the replay. You'll see this uh, takeaway. You'll watch how he throws the ball on the run. Yeah, that's a, a Jalen Day who makes the interception. What a play. Day cutting inside the receiver and making the interception in the end zone. So a touchdown saving interception by Jalen Day. Jalen Day, a sophomore on this team. So the Warriors have lots of senior talent, but they also have some underclassmen as well. First and 10 for Haverty Grace at their own 20 yard line. Back to throw, Greesock has his man taken down. That's Rabbit with the catch. Yeah, Short game. Game. Yeah, he gained a yard on the play, that's it. Second down, a very short yard gain. He's got a long nine to go for first down. His clock running at seven minutes and 30 seconds left in the third period. That's a score of 30 to seven. That's what it was at the half. Paulson stopped the Warriors on their first possession and drove down to the goal line before it was intercepted, and now Haverty Grace has the ball back. Pass, good, white, shakes one tackle, hanging on and making the tackle. That was Nick Curry who said it would not be denied, but it will be a first down. The ball's up to the 38-yard line now. Bob Greesock has a nice quick release. He just holds the ball almost like a catcher throwing the ball up to his ear and then just guns the ball. Very smart, very athletic. Well, technique-wise, that's the way you want your quarterback to be. Jordan White gives him a nice target. With White again to the outside. Well, White went inside the last time, and now he came outside on this one, and he's made two catches. Now he's down to their 47 yard line. Two first downs. Very nice sportsmanship there. He and Nick Curry exchanged handshakes. They're both saying, hey, nice catch, nice tackle. Looks like White lost a shoe. He's on the sideline momentarily. You'll see the Howard Grace uh, bench with uh, Brian Eberhardt. Uh, eight years of coach here. He's also the basketball coach here at Howard Grace. Rabbit, no, it's Greesock keeps the ball. Around the left side, Greesock, one man to beat. Good block there by Rabbit. Greesock will go in for his third touchdown run of the night. About a 48-yard touchdown run by Greesock. Nice downfield blocking by the wide receivers and running back of having a grace and a very, very nice run by Greesock. It really was. Here comes a replay and watch the, watch the block by Rabbit downfield, number two. Well, watch how Greesock sets up every block. Fakes in, then he goes, or fakes out, then he goes in, fakes in, and then he goes out. He gives his blockers an opportunity to turn the, the defenders. Very nice job. 36-7 the score. Extra point attempt, up and good. There we go. That's uh, Chandler Russo with the extra point. 37-7, it is a 30-point lead. We remind you that in high school football, 35-point uh, advantage in the second half. Uh, they have a running clock. They call it the slaughter rule or mercy rule that uh, the clock runs continuously except on timeouts. So right now, Falston is within that 35-point margin, and obviously they want to continue trying to chip away at this lead if they can. Alex Greesock, three touchdown runs. He now has 14 touchdown runs on the season. There you see Jimmy Grant, the head coach of uh, Falston. We talked to Jimmy and Jimmy said, yeah, he's in it for the long haul. He wants to be able to build a program. Bob, we were talking to, to Tim Ward, the Falston's uh, player back in the 99, 2000 era. That's back when Falston was nine and one playing very well, and that's the game, aim to get back to that level. Well, that's what you want to try as any program. I mean, if, you, if you're going to take the job, as Jim obviously, you know, did, and, and he's been there for a long time and, you know, and, and deserves a job, so, you know, you want to shoot to be the best. You, you want to get to that level, and 
Bob, in your experience of knowing coaches, a 40-year coach, uh, Dave Seske, have you ever known someone to coach that long in one program? Uh, in, the, in Maryland, I'm talking about. John Brady, the Annapolis High School coach, coached for a, a long, long time. I, I don't know, but he, but there were years that John coached both the boys and the girls basketball teams wow. in the same season. Um, the only coach that Falston ever knew, Dave Seske, except for that one year. Is that White with the interception? Yeah. Did he catch it inbounds? <laughs> Jordan White with that the interception. Was, that was a very, very good play. Here's the replay. Watch how he's able to secure this ball as he goes out of bounds. Well, watch how he jumps this route. Look at this. Great hands, great catch. Keeps both feet in bounds, and it is Falston uh, turnover. Harvard the great ball. Well, he's an athlete, Jordan White. He is that. Gleesock, being rushed, gets it off, long throw. It's going to be caught, touchdown! <laughs> Try, trying to get a number bomb on that. Uh, six, it looks like. Yeah, it is. That looks like number six. It is number six, and that's Tommy Meehan. Tommy Meehan Jr. Here's a replay. You'll see this pass from 37. Beautiful. All perfectly thrown. Avoids the rush, fires it up, drops it right into the Bailey. Well, and I saw the back going out of the backfield, and he was wide open. He could have gone down the field for 30 yards himself. And Greesock just looked up the whole way to make the throw and just a perfect, perfect throw. Great catch. Greesock to me. And extra point is good, 43-7. And now we're in the mercy rule time. Check it, the extra point was not good. The clock is still running now. Yeah, 43-7, uh, math skills never my greatest, but that's 36 point difference. It's more than 35, Don, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> and the clock will continue to run now with five minutes and counting left in this uh, third period of play. Bob, that may be one of the prettiest pass plays that we've seen all season long. Yeah, that, that, was, that was one of them in the John Carroll game where we saw some also some beautiful pass plays. That ball plays. was dropped right into his, uh, you know, right over his uh, left shoulder, and Meehan was able to secure it for the touchdown. Well, it's fun watching watching uh, Greesock play quarterback and, and the wide receivers and, uh, you know, and, and he has a plethora of them. It's not like it's one. Well, now there's another word you've thrown on me, a plethora. Does that mean he's got a lot of them? He has a lot of them. Oh, thank you. Catch the football. Whistle blows. Now, if you threw cornucopia in there on me now, then I'm really going to be worried. I have to start bringing a dictionary with me here to the ballgames that my partner, Bob uh, McCone, throwing these words on me. How do you cook corn to make it cornucopia? <laughs> uh, don't know. <laughs> don't know. 43-7 the score. Harvard Grace, of course, last week uh, trailing by 24-0 in the first period against Elkton, losing 50-30, to their first loss of the year. They come back today, and, uh, of course, they have come back with a vengeance. They have played very well. You know, and, and, and it's 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 really sad because I, the, the Falston kids have, have played and played, and they continue to compete. And, and you know, hats off to them and their coaching staff. It, well, no question about it. Uh, and you're playing against a team that's superior number-wise, uh, size-wise, and speed and experience. Ball's an open ball at the 20-yard line. Still on his feet and finally taken out of bounds. Is that number 21, Matt White? Yes. White with the return up to the 37-yard line, 38-yard line. I mean, Foster has some athletes. They just don't have the numbers yeah. that Harvey Grace has. Talked to Jimmy Grant again before. The JV program has played well this year at Falston, and so they are building. Uh, there's no question about they'll be back in terms of a powerhouse. Well, that's how you do it. I mean, you, you have to build your, your youngest program, and you have to keep 
coaching up those kids uh -huh. until they get to the varsity level. And usually that first year at the varsity level, you know, they need a little bit of experience up there. And then when they're good players and their technique's good and they're coached well, and, and they work hard like these kids do, then good things really start to happen for your program. Cleveland in the backfield along with Akins. Akins looking down the middle, has his man. Uh, flag down, no. Ooh, looked, like there, looked like there was contact there. C.J. Turner going for the ball. There was contact. It was close. We saw the flag thrown in the first uh, uh, period that uh, looked like that might have been a chance for the, another flag to be thrown, but it wasn't. Yeah, well, the official had a, a difficult angle because he, he, the defender bumped him uh -huh. from the front to the offensive player's back and and the back judge had to look through that to see yeah. you know to see if it was bumped how hard he was bumped whatever and you know obviously unless you're superman and have eyes that you can see through people it was tough josh murdler the young man who was the defender on that play shivers with the good play by clavin to block it shivers is. off a running back knocking the big <laughs> the big man off off the uh, off of play. Brandon Clavin uh, had the angle, and uh, <laughs> Mr. Shivers was coming in looking for fresh meat, and all of a sudden uh, he got uh, he got tackled. Maybe yeah. Coach Grant realized, hey, my tackle's not blocking him. I know my running back can do it, and so now he gets the running back to block him. The guy, and he did a great job. Incomplete the pass. Third down now. Third and ten. Clock running with just 39 seconds left in this third period. 30 to seven was the halftime score. Uh, Harvard Grace has scored twice. Greesock on a 48 yard run and then Greesock on a 37 yard TD pass to Meehan. Those the two touchdowns here in the second half. Third down. Probably the last play here of this uh, third period. Pass play, it's gonna be intercepted by Mergler. Josh Mergler has the ball right in his uh, in his stomach and he wraps it up and run, turns it down to the 20 yard line. What a, what a great drop by Mergler. Mergler had two interceptions coming in, now flags go down. What a great, great drop. I mean, he, he, he flew right out into that open zone what he was supposed to be taking care of and the ball was thrown right to him because he was in the perfect place. Here's the replay. You'll see exactly what Bob McCone's talking Watch about. Watch him run to the right here. Watch 14. There he goes, right over to the right in this drop zone. And quarterback probably never sees him. All the quarterback saw was Curry open and Mergler came in and made the interception. Josh Mergler, 13.7 tackles a game, two sacks coming in, now has three interceptions. It's gonna go against Haverty Grace, the penalty after the play was over. So the Warriors will have the ball as we begin the fourth period of play. Leading by a score of 43 to seven, that is the end. The Falston young man uh, is really enjoying this Harvard Grace music, Bob. Uh, number 18, Ryan uh, Langlotz. I tell you, the Warrior Band is great. They do a great job. And you know if you can convince your opposing team to go into a dance, there you see the, the band. How long is Mr. Huff been the record of this band quarter. now? You know, he still looks like quarter. he's about uh, 21, <laughs> but I think he's probably been here. Dave Trey Montana, how long has uh, Rick Hoff been here as the band director? His 26th year. His 26th year? He looks like he's 26. How does that happen? I was my 23rd, and he was here for three years before me. Wow. wow. Dave Trey Montana just told me that he's been here 23 years. He also looks like he was about 23 years old. Did he hear me? <laughs> he just thinks you're. He just, he just thinks you're sucking up, Don. That's all. No, Dave says we're all just getting old, but we're uh, maintaining our our pace. Dave doing a great job as the PA announcer here. Fumble. 
picked up and now it's loose. Real Let's see who got it. Have the greatest player came down with it. Yeah. Jumped on it. It looked like Boston had a chance to get it. Number 50, Brandon Stokes. Brandon Stokes comes in and makes the recovery. Clock is running with 11 minutes and uh, change left in the game. Harvard Grace will now go to six and one on the year. Boston to 0 and six. Rabbit no, hands the ball off. Yeah, there's Rabbit in a quarterback. Max James. Yeah, new players in the ball game, but Rabbit is uh, at He's the quarterback. 84 was a running back on this yeah, play, and he, yeah. he's a freshman, Max James. That was that speed option where Rabbit had the direct snap, put it in the uh, in the stomach of uh, Max White, Max James, that is, and James ended up with the ball. New player coming in the ball game. Uh, Montez Chin back in the ball game, number yeah. one. We saw him on the what one of the first plays first of the play, game. Yeah, pretty much. For I think it was the first play of the game. Demontez Chin, a sophomore. So a lot of the young players now getting a chance to play here as the clock winds at 10 minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah, Coach Everhart's starting to clear his bench a little bit. Another bad snap, hit in the backfield. Brandon Rabbit. Uh, there was a fumble on the play, and they said Falston. Yeah, recovered. it looks like Falston's able, Justin Weekend, able to come up with a fumble. Uh, he's had a good game for Falston he today. Has that. He's played well. Justin, the 6'2", 170 Johnson's pounds. played well for Falston today. Quarterback Aikens has played well as, uh, in addition. This is Clavin with the ball, shakes one tackle, goes around the right side. Well, Falston has had a problem. It has been the running game all year. They just have not been able to develop a consistent running game. Well, when you start a, a, a freshman at left tackle, at left tackle, you know, he started a sophomore at left guard. You know, it, it, it's it, it's tough. Hakins looking, throwing, has a man complete, shakes the tackle. Finally taken off his feet at the 35 yard line. That's number 12, Alex Bailey. <laughs> Alex Bailey, the 4.55 GPA student, makes his second catch of the night. First down and 10. Ball just outside the 35 yard line at the 36. Clock winding at eight minutes and 20 seconds. Coach Everard has a lot of his young kids out there now on defense for have the grace. There's a handoff, that's Claven. Cleveland hit and held. We've got Joe Martin on the tackle. And Josh Murdler still in the ball game. You yeah, see Murdler's right? in the ball game, but he's taking them out little by little here. Uh, Rob Shivers has uh, played a trick on us. He switched numbers, uh, Bob. He has number 55 as well as number 27. And Shivers is still in the ball game. But he's now wearing number 27. Now that's not fair. I think you have to tell everybody on that. Aikens looking long down that right side. All oh, just Ooh. overthrown. A nice pass. Nice arm strength. He's in the ball about 40 yards in the air. Third down coming up. Clock continues to run at seven minutes and 20 seconds. The Montez Chin was on the coverage on that play for. Have the grace. And we got third and about seven here, and there are six. What are we going to? You don't have to go for the whole thing here. You right. can, you know, you can pick up a few and get get a little more here. 
30 to 7 was the score at the half. Uh, Falston, or I should say, Harvard Gray scored two touchdowns in that third period to go up 43 7. That's where we are. Savion Hilton is at the one tackle for Havity Grace. Yo, hey, what's up, buddy? <laughs> How are you? Hakins, well? yeah. being rushed, avoids the tackle. He's got the, he's got the first down. If and he he's running, and he'll go out of bounds with the first down. What a nice play by uh, Colin Hakins. Hakins showed some speed, Bob. Uh, number 60, Devon Baker's in the ball game now. For Havity Grace. I'm trying to get down at Havity Grace. Number 56, Skyler Lindsay. Sam Ross, I see number 19 in the ball game. Number three, is that Orion James? Antonio Thomas, number eight, also in the game. Clavin around the right side. Trying to look for the corner and gets a little bit up out of bounds, maybe at the, uh, looks like about the 20 yard line. Five play drive started at the 50. Clock running at five minutes and 30 seconds. Second and about eight now. Bob, it's been an entertaining game, obviously a one-sided game, Havity Grace using its talent, but uh, as you said, Boston has hung tough, they've played hard. Yeah, Falston has played, and, and they, they, they're, they're playing to the end of the football game, which I really respect. And the, the kids have belief in itself. You know, you're going to build a program like that. You get kids to play like this for you, you're going to build a program, and you're going to be successful. Boy, look at Aikens go, gets another first down. I'm sure that uh, Jimmy Grant wishes that he could take Aikens and change that senior <laughs> after his name to Junior. Well, you, you'd love to be able to keep the kids who have made you successful over the years and, you know, be Peter Pan and never get old. And uh, But the thing about high school sports is that it's four years. Uh -huh. And you get your four years in and you move on to bigger and better things. Well, Colin Akins has really uh, demonstrated his ability here tonight. Four minutes Number and 20 seconds. 23, Zach. Anderson has just come into the ball game for Happy Grace. First down and goal inside the 10. Akins looking, looking, now rolling. This young man has run very well. Akins goes in for the touchdown. touchdown. Colin Akins goes in from nine oh, yards out. Nice play. 43-13 the score. So Aikens has a touchdown pass to Bailey that in the first half. You'll see, see how Aikens pulls it down. He really has good wheels. Oh, he can run. Coming right at you. In for the touchdown. Nice job in the truck. And the kick is blocked. So the score will remain 43-13. Well, I have to give Tim credit too. That was a great job on the camera work there by Tim. Now the clock stops again because it's a 30-point game. Yeah. Good point, Bob. You are right on top of it. Somebody has to pay attention. <laughs> oh. 43-13 with 4.06 left in the contest. Homecoming night at Haverty Grace High School. I haven't had a chance to thank Heather Crawford, the athletic director, and Jimmy Reynolds, uh, the principal. Brad Spence, the assistant principal. They really made us feel very welcome here, as they always do at Haverty Grace. Line drive kick. Hits off a Harvard Grace player and wisely downing the ball there for the Warriors. The ball at the uh, 26, 27 yard line where Harvard Grace will put it in play. Bob, 
Bob, the wide world of Harford uh, Cable Network Sports. Next week, we'll be uh, up at Geneva Farm. We'll be doing uh, golf, the county golf tournament. Tuesday. And then the next day, Wednesday, I get to do cheerleading. I, I'm you're sure. Gonna be, you're going to be with me? You can, no. 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 Can't be with you that day. Bob has declined. You have a previous engagement. I wish I could be with you that day. Yeah. It's always fun. It's an exciting, uh, I mean, cheerleaders who all year long cheer for the other teams, and then one time a year, they get to compete against each other. It's just a great thing. Well, it's actually more than one time. I mean, from in the high schools, it's, it's the one, but they have state competitions, they yeah. have summer competitions. Yeah, but the, the thing I like about cheerleading, each season is a different squad. So you've got the fall cheerleading squad, and oftentimes, you know, that those, those young ladies or young men uh, play a sport, sport. a different, right. sport different sport in, in the winter. Yep. So you may have a different team altogether. But you're right, they go to uh, competitions, they go to training, they go to you know, the skill camps all year long. I have a granddaughter, an eight-year-old granddaughter, who I can't tell you how much time she spends with her cheerleading. Keeping the ball, that's rapid around the left side. Yeah, because you figure modern cheerleading is not just jumping and you know, yelling. They do gymnastics, they do dance. Uh, it, it's just amazing the kind of athletes they are. And they throw my granddaughter up in the air like they don't care where she lands. See, I, I tell my granddaughter, who is also a flyer, I say, put on weight, okay? Please. Convince people that you are going to be a base, not a flyer. Our great friend Terry Cranefeld, who was a cheerleader with the Ravens and before that with Saverna Park, her entire senior year she spent in the cast where they threw her up and forgot to catch her. Well, that's where my granddaughter cheers in Saverna Park, so I hope they catch her better than they did Terry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Terry had a cast, I think, from her ankle to her hip where they dropped her on the uh, track uh, at Savannah Park. So as a Ravens cheerleader, she was captain of the cheerleading squad, but she was a dancer. Right. She had learned that lesson that uh, you don't do uh, leaps and throws and stuff like that. She learned she didn't fly. No, no. Nor does she bounce very well. <laughs> Rabbit still in the quarterback. Yes. Hand off to Max James. <laughs> Falston player. Uh, Another first down here. Falston player looked like he might have been called for a penalty, and he said, look, hands up. I didn't touch him. That was Ryan Langlotz, Lang the James young man. James Martin uh, in the ball game now for having a grace. Number 13. Ryan uh, Langlotz, who was the dancing Falston player a few moments ago to that outstanding beat of the Havre Grace Warrior marching band. Sam Ross, number 19 out here at wide receiver. 23, this is a number we haven't called yet, Don. Makes, uh, makes the catch. Yes. Zach Anderson, yeah, the oh, that's Zach uh, Anderson called him once. Zach Anderson, yes. the n number one uh, number person yeah. in our list of players because they list them alphabetically. Yes. Now, if they would only play alphabetically, we could call their names much more quickly. Clock is stopped. No, it's running now at 113. Yeah, I think he stayed in bounds and was tackled. He did. Coming up on the one minute mark left in the contest. Two plays, Don. Should be it. Hand off inside. That's number three. And that's uh, Orion James, the name we haven't called yet. Orion James, the first That's going to be two plays now. First down, the clock stops on the first down. This drive started way back on the 27 yard line of Haverty Grace. They moved smartly down the field. They're trying to bleed this clock down, so maybe they only have to run one play. Maybe they'll take a knee here. Let's well, see. Yeah, Brian Eberhardt, the Haverty Grace coach, understands that uh, yeah, it looks like they are in the victory formation. This should be the last play of the game. Takes a knee. Clock continues to run. Yeah, 10 over. seconds, 9 seconds, and that will be our final score. 
43 to 13. I'll ask the folks in the truck, will we have time for post-game interviews? Yes, so we will have post-game interviews, so hang around. Our final score, 43-13. We'll be back with those post-game interviews and some comments and wrap up the game for you. We'll be right back with that. Well, we're just moments after the Haverty Grace Warriors recorded their sixth win of the season. They're 6-1 and one now, actually 5-1, and one, I believe, uh, heading into the Seamelton Wright Edgewood games next week. 43-13 uh, over a tough Falston team. With me, Jordan White. Uh, Jordan, uh, Falston, we were impressed with that those young people didn't give up. They played hard the whole game. Yeah, they played hard the whole game. Um, hats off to them. They, des they, they deserve to be happy. Uh, we talk about last week's game. I know that bitter taste of losing to Elkton. Did tonight kind of ease that pain a bit? Uh, yeah, definitely turn it around. I'm glad the guys are in the locker room probably cheering, getting ready for tomorrow. But we'll be back in there on Monday. Well, you're a, a team of, with, made of seniors now. It's a senior-laden team. You've won the regions three times in a row. You've stopped one step short of the state championship game for those three years. I know looking beyond the regular season, that has to be a goal. It has to be a goal. It is a goal. Every time I go to sleep, I just think about how I want to get this team to the state championship and also win. Well, the other thing about your team is I like the way you care about each other. You can tell that there's no uh, prima donnas on the team. Everybody's pulling for everybody else. Yeah, it's a brotherhood here. It's uh, it's great. We have, we play our best football when we're communicating with each other, when we're picking each other up. That's the, any team, that's a great football. Well, you've got a combination of speed, power. Uh, you play well running the ball game. You play well throwing the ball game. I really like your defensive play. That interception you made on this near side, that was a great interception. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, usually in our coverage, I'm not supposed to be there, but I knew that it was open, so I just had to make a play for my team. Yeah, I saw you jumping the route. You could see that sort of look in your eye, and you came and picked the ball off. Yeah, I didn't think he was going to throw it. <laughs> Tell me about that punt return, 75 yards down the near side. Uh, to be honest, before he kicked the ball, I was just like, uh, do I want to catch it? <laughs> and then when I saw it bounce, I was just like, oh, that's mine. And I was gone. And then the other great play you made is when you chased down Jimmy Johnson. He looked like he was going in for the touchdown. Uh, he, he just, at the very last minute, you caught him from behind. Oh, yeah. I, uh, at first, I was getting ready to strip him, but then I saw that he was pulling away a little bit, so I had to dive back through him. Well, very good. Hang with me one second. I'm going to turn over and talk to Alex Griesach. Alex, uh, two touchdown passes, three touchdowns running, one touchdown pass taken away. He could have had three and three. A great night. I guess you're pretty happy with the way you played. Uh, yeah, it definitely feels great coming off home, homecoming week. And now uh, after that bear loss to Elkton, it feels great to come back and really win a game. And we were talking about at halftime, you escort the queen out to, in the homecoming uh, uh, court and you end up being king as well. Yeah. What else do you have to do tonight? You throw three, two touchdown passes, you run for three, you're the king of the court. What's going on? Uh, I just uh, really love the school and um, I really love like everyone in the school and I feel like I'm friends with everyone and I just like love giving back to the school and everything. Alex, I'm really impressed with that, that you are a person who not only has talent and smarts and everything else, but you do have a caring spirit that you give uh, to this school. It is a great school that has a tremendous spirit. I know you're happy about that. Yeah, I'm great. I love this community. It's great. Small knit community. Most of these guys I'm playing football with, I played back in Pee Wee football. And it's great because we have that bond that's been lasting for years. And now you're a senior. It's coming to an end. I know that's a little bit bittersweet. Yeah, I'm just glad I, I had my senior homecoming game. came out with a bang. It's a great game by it. My entire team as well as me. Oh, wonderful. Congratulations. Great job. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the homecoming. Thank you. Appreciate and it. There they are, two great young men. I'm going to bring in my partner, and you all go get with your teammates. Have all fun right, this you. weekend. Hey, it's nice meeting you guys. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Bob McCohen, again, impressive young men. Not only they great are. great players, but just great people. Oh, they're really good people. You, you talk to them, and, and, and they have direction. You know, they, they have an idea of what they want to do in life. and. Uh, really good people. Gives you a good feeling to be around them. Falston gives you a good feeling also. A, t a team that could have given up, you could say, hey, this team is outclassing us. We're not going to play tonight, but they played hard the whole game, stayed in there, and showed us some talent. They, they played to the whistle, and, and that's a reflection of their coaching staff and their players, and uh, I, I, I give them all the respect in the world. Great job for them tonight. Three touchdowns running for Alex Griesach, whom you met. Two touchdowns for uh, Jordan White. That uh, field goal of 38 yards by uh, by Chandler Russo, also very impressive. Uh, Havre de Grace, I think they assuaged any feelings they had from that loss to Elkton last week. 
Yeah, well, that's gone now. I mean, now it's just the next the next football game for them. Now it's Sea Milton right next week, and really that's all they can look at, or or they'll be back in the same position they were after Elkton. Well, very good, Bob McCone. Thanks for being my partner tonight. Our final score: 43-13. As we said, three TD runs for Alex Greesock, two touchdown passes, one beautiful pass to Meehan. Uh, we commented about that off air that that was one of the prettiest passes we've seen for a while. Also, uh, Jordan White with two touchdowns. And as we said, Russo with that 38-yard field goal. Uh, and uh, uh, Aikens had two touchdown passes for uh, Falston. So our final score, 43-13. Bob McCone, thanks so much. Thank you. Great, great night. Thanks you all for tuning in. Again, our final 43-13. Haverty Grace goes to 5-1 and one on the season. Uh, meantime, actually to 6-1, and one, I'll correct myself. And uh, Falston is now 0-6. So thanks for tuning in. Good night, everyone. Stay tuned all season long for Harford County High School Sports on the Harford Cable Network.